Now it's, it's back to turning again. Oh, are we live? I think we're back on again. Um, okay, folks, sorry for all the issues we've been having. Are you with me? Um, can you add some comments in the chat to just let me know you can hear me, the audio's okay, and you can see me? Yeah, so let me, I'm trying to, I had to change to a different computer here, so let me try to get this, let me try to get this right. How about that? I mean, it might be as good as we're going to get for now. <laughs> oh, well, I had my mask on. But took it off. I don't know if you all saw the beginning of the video. Oh, here we go. Hello. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for it. And so can you guys hear me? Can you just say thumbs up? Yes, we can hear you or something to let me know. Thanks, all you guys. Geraldyn and Francine and Shelly and Ellen and Carol. I can see your comments. I can, I can hear you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so... Um, let me go back and just say one more time, I know I said it before on the other video that's probably separate from this one now, but I have my mask here and I uh, wanted to thank my sister Cindy for making masks and uh, all that she's done to contribute her time uh, to make masks and all of you out there who are doing similar things, taking food to people on the front line and um, d donating money and your time and thank you so much. We've all been well, we know how hard this has been for just uh, those of us who have been home and well. So I can't imagine for everyone else who's had illness and and um, and other um, and other issues, homeschooling and um, job outages and all kinds of things that people are dealing with. So um, interesting times, and hopefully we're going to get through this, and everyone's going to be a little happier and a little. Uh, kinder when we're through, and um, uh, yeah, let's just let's just hope this is this passes as quickly as possible. So, um, hi again, everyone. Thanks for coming back and stay, staying with me. Um, I want to um, introduce myself. I'm Stephanie Bond. I'm a novelist. I live in Atlanta, and I write romantic comedies and and um, humorous mysteries. I'm probably best known for the Body Mover series. And uh, lately, I've been, the uh, last four years or so, I've been releasing daily serials. So that's what we're here to talk about tonight, celebrate the new serial, Lottery Girl. Um, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. So I've got you know, lots of info to share. But thank you for coming. I know there were thousands of things you could have been doing tonight. So I really appreciate you being here for this video. and. I've got things I want to share, but I hope you've got things that you want to share with me too. And um, I think if you just add questions to the um, chat section, I believe, um, hopefully I can get to all your questions if you have some things you want to know. So be uh, queuing those up and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Um, so uh, first though, I wanted to share that I have a new website. Pretty excited about it. It's cleaner and brighter and lighter and easier to navigate. And um, there's some search features on there so you can look through my books and hopefully find what you need and sort things by series and publication date and uh, some other options out there, including the language uh, that you would like to see. You know, I've got some books in French and some books in um, um, Italian and some German language books out there, so those will be um, able, a little bit more uh, searchable. And there's also a, a new feature to print a book list. So um, play around a little bit, let me know what you think about the new website. I'm pretty happy about it. I hope you like it too. Um, and the other, um, to go along with the new website, another thing I'm doing is rolling out a new version of my uh, newsletter. So I'm changing the name of it to the Reading, Writing, and Reinvention Newsletter. And it's still going to be book notices and, uh, and updates on what I'm working on. Um, so you'll still get all that information, but also I'm going to add extra information for readers 
um, things of interest on like how you can better use your e-readers, maybe what libraries are doing, um, just what's going on in the book industry in general that you might be interested in. Also some information for writers uh, that might be interested in um, behind the scenes, like uh, things that I'm, you know, how I come up with my ideas and how I uh, work on different projects, so different uh, information for writers as well. And um, also just some uh, general lifestyle tips. Maybe we'll talk about journaling, uh, book clubs, um, and uh, things that, anything you're interested in, let me know what you'd like to hear about. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, so, the, and I also intend to put them out more often, so hopefully we can stay in touch. So if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, and go to my website, it's on the front page, and just, just tab down and sign up for the newsletter. It's totally free, and you can unsubscribe at any time. So... Uh, so, let's talk about the new cereal, uh, Lottery Girl. Tomorrow is the premiere date for Lottery Girl, July 1. Um, it's the first episode. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get the, um, the cover pulled up. Let's see if you all can see that. Let's see. Oh, bear with me. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let me try this again. Oh, there it's better. There it comes. Okay. I just love the artwork for this series. And um, I want to give a shout out to my cover guy, Andy Brown, who is, uh, creates all my cover and all my artwork for um, the serials and the banners and all of that. And I just love the artwork for um, Lottery Girl. And I'm excited about a new story. So the way that the serials work is come to my website every day uh, starting tomorrow and through December 31st. You'll get the entire story for free. And it's all the serials are my gift to you uh, for being such loyal readers. Um, so Lottery Girl is, let's see, how can I describe the character? She is, Mallory Green is her name, and she is a woman who is unlucky in love, unlucky in life, and um, uh, just unlucky in, in just about every area of, of um, her existence. She's had a, a rough background, and things just, she's just used to things not going her way. So uh, she hits a jackpot, and we find out what happens to her and um, how life uh, gets better or not, we'll see. But we're gonna see if money truly can buy happiness. So tomorrow, Lottery Girl, um, day one. And uh, like all the cereals, the first 10 days will accumulate. Um, so please ask uh, 10 friends to come and visit us tomorrow so we can all uh, get started on Lottery Girl, get as many readers on board as possible before uh, it reverts to one day on uh, uh, July 11th. It will revert to just one day on the serial. So, uh, but let's, let's get as many readers on board as we can for those first 10 days. Um, so also, oh, I wanted to show you how it worked on my phone. I don't think I had a better screen before, so I'm not sure how we're going to do this. Hang on. Let me see. Okay, so this is a picture of my new website. Maybe you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, but anyway, on my new website, go to uh, the top of the top of the website where it says menu. And then when it drops down, you're going to see a tab for serials. And then when you drop down the serials tab, you'll see Lottery Girl at the top. And that's the um, serial that starts tomorrow. So if you go to that page, um, that's where you'll see the Lottery Girl banner, and you'll see uh, clicks, links to the um, six monthly novellas, and you'll see the introduction, and then below that, of course, you'll see that day's episode. So um, it works just like the other serials have been working, but it just looks a little differently because of the new website layout. Uh, so also starting tomorrow, in addition to the Lottery Girl serial, is another serial 
called the Coma Girl Audio Serial. So uh, Coma Girl is the first serial that I wrote in 2016. And uh, the Coma Girl Audio Serial is the same story. It's just that it's told in uh, audio. You'll get to listen to the episodes instead of reading them. So if you um, go to the same menu that I mentioned, do the drop down from the top, um, click on serials, and you'll see the second serial listed is the Coma Girl Audio Serial. And you can go there and uh, listen to the introduction. Actually, the introduction is up now. You can do that. Um, and then it works just like the text serial. Every day, you'll get a new episode to listen to. They're about five minutes a piece, something like that. So if you'd like to go back and listen to the Coma Girl story again, you can do that. Um, that's going to be completely free as well. Um, or if you have friends that didn't get to read Coma Girl and that you'd like to share the uh, audio serial with them, that would be great. Um, or if you've got friends who really aren't big readers and you think maybe they would enjoy the audio version more, please send them to the page. And um, again, it's all free. It's my gift to you. So please take advantage and, sh and share it with as many people as you can. Okay, so, oh, another thing I wanted to mention about, about, about the uh, Lottery Girl a serial is please join the Facebook group. Um, we have a Facebook group for the Body Movers uh, series, and uh, the readers of that uh, series uh, has a separate group. But there's also a, a, um, a group for the serials, and we've changed the name of this one to the Lottery Girl Facebook group, so please join. It's a great group of readers, and if you go there, um, you will get to interact with all the other readers of the serial. And uh, one of the best things is a couple of the people in the group, a couple of the ladies there, uh, Shirley Worley and um, Chantrell Wade, both do a great job of doing recaps of the uh, day's episode. And they are hysterical. These ladies are great, funny um, uh, just put their own spin on what they think the readers or the uh, the uh, characters should be doing next and uh, things they do and don't like and uh, they keep us all entertained and I drop in and and uh, do a lot of observation because I want to see how people are reacting to the episode so if you've got something to add make sure you uh, join the group um, all you have to do is ask to be um, invited into the group uh, and you'll you'll get in uh, so please join the group uh, it's a great, great fun, fun, fun way to share the uh, um, serial with everyone. Uh, okay, so also, let's see. I've got some, uh, I keep doing that. I've got some uh, questions that have been sent in uh, before this started, uh, but I'm going to take questions from you if you have them. Uh, I'm looking at some of the comments. Let me take just a few minutes to say, hello, um, so Jose Miguel, hello, and uh, Tammy from Olive Hill. <laughs> um, that's where I'm from, so we've got a lot of hometown people on the, on the um, link tonight. Um, oh, thanks everyone. Thanks for letting me know that you can see the cover, and let's see. Um, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and take Mary's question, Mary, uh, posted, what was your inspiration for the lottery theme? Um, thanks, Mary. Uh, she's a longtime friend and uh, loyal reader and uh, just an all, all-around great gal. Anyway, Mary, thanks for that. And uh, so what was my inspiration? Actually, I've, oh, I've always wanted to write a story about someone who won the lottery and what happened to them and, you know, the good things and maybe not so good things that happened. And many years ago, I pitched the book to my um, editor at Harlequin, and she liked the idea, um, and we planned to, to, to write the book, we planned to have the book come out. Um, but then what happened is I was invited into a continuity series and I uh, was asked to sort of adapt my idea to fit into that series. 
and it was the first book in a multi-author series. So my book kicked off the rest of the series. But what that meant is that I had to show the girl winning the lottery, but not anything much that happened after that. So um, I was happy to write the book. It was a book called uh, She Did a Bad, Bad Thing, and um, was really enjoyed that story. It was sexy, uh, but it really didn't take advantage and do much with the whole lottery theme. So, um, so fast forward uh, to you know a few months ago when I was sitting down trying to think of a theme for this year's serial, and I thought about the lottery idea that I didn't really get to uh, explore in the previous book. So that's where we came up with Lottery Girl, and um, I'm really liking the story. I like the character. I hope you guys do too. Of course, the great thing about the serial is I can get your feedback before the book is completely done because I'm kind of writing this as I go. So I take your comments and your feedback and that really does help steer the story and where I'm going next with it. So I want to hear from you. Um, thanks for all the comments about the cover. Uh, Linda says, uh, and Ellen say, great cover, great cover. I know, I really love the cover for this. And uh, um, um, the the uh, colorful, the balls and the, the uh, every, I think we're going to be able to do a lot with visually with this book too. So, um, so yeah, I'm excited about it. Thanks for those comments. Hi, Barry. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Too bad. Christy says, too bad. I can't wait for the daily and I buy them by the month. Okay. Um, that was actually a question that I got uh, an email before the, um, before the video started, so I wanted to address. There's a question from um, Sharon. Sharon asked, um, I'm confused about Lottery Girl. Is it a free daily serial with the monthly novellas supplemental, or do we need to purchase each month to be able to read them? So great question, Sharon. I'm glad you asked. Um, the way that the serial works, um, in case you're new to my serial uh, page, is uh, it will accumulate for 10 days from July 1st to July 10th to allow as many readers as possible to get on board. Then on July 11th, it reverts to just that day's episode. Um, and from then on, from July 11th through the end of the year, so through December 31st, only one day's episode will be posted. Uh, so if you come back to the site, um, to that page every day, then of course you get the entire story for free. Um, but there are readers who either get behind or they want to read ahead. And so those, for those readers, there's a monthly novella that's available exclusively through Amazon. And uh, you can buy the novella with a, month, a month's worth of episodes in that particular novella. And then at the end of the serial, I'll be putting the entire, no the entire serial out in print and also in audio. So some of my readers... Um, get the entire serial for free on my website, but then they buy the print book at the end of the serial, or they buy the audio book, or they get July for free, and they buy the August novella, then they go back to get September for free. Um, you can read it any way you want to. A lot of mixing and matching going on, and I'm just happy. Any way you want to read the story works for me. So anyway, that's the, that's the uh, gist of it. The novellas are not supplemental. You get the entire story if you just read every day for free. The novellas are the same story. It's just delivered in a different format is all. So thanks, Sharon, for that question. Um, I've got, uh, let me see if I've got any other questions on the side here. So looking forward to Lottery Girl. Thanks, Janice. Um, Let's see. Agree. Love to read it daily. Good. Oh, love body movers. Well, okay. We got to get body movers in there. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, really glad to get book 11 out there this year. And um, yes, I'm already thinking about book 12. And um, I don't know how we're going to, how it's going to end. You think I know? I don't know. I don't know yet. Carlotta hasn't told me what she's going to do. Um, hi everyone. Thanks for the, thanks for the hellos and coma girl was great. Thanks for that, Janice. Joanne, hi. Shelly. 
Oh, Coma Girl will be new for Shelly. That's good. Uh, only one complaint. The books are way too short. We never want them to end. See, the problem is, Rhonda, thanks for that. The problem is you all read faster than I can write. And, um, I'm, but I'm working as fast as I can. I really am. Okay, so I, this was another question that was sent in. Uh, John asked, what did you do to pass time during the coronavirus shutdown? So basically, I did some and maybe all of the things that probably all of you did. Um, I got to jump on my spring cleaning. Um, I uh, watched a lot of Netflix and Hulu and PBS Masterpiece and Amazon Prime. And um, oh, I did take a few classes on um, masterclass.com. I don't know if you all know about that website, but it's, uh, you can take classes from different experts in different fields and so I took a few of those and that was fun and and I got in a lot of writing uh, yeah it's a good time if you're going to be uh, shut in and you're an introvert like me then I guess there's there's just no excuse I have to write more and and I've been writing a lot and it was actually nice to have the time to plan this serial which is more downtime than I normally have this time of the year so so that was that was actually nice um, and we're not through this, folks. We may have more shutdowns coming. So, uh, yeah, let's just all stay productive and keep wearing our masks. How about that? Okay, uh, let's see. Comments on the side? Oh, I, thanks. I didn't get to read Coma Girl. Now I can listen to it. Yes, it's, it's all going to be um, out there every day, just like the text version. Um, and you may enjoy the, the uh, audio version more more because the narrator, uh, Maureen Jones, was she was she did a fantastic job on that uh, narration. It's just um, wonderful to listen to. So even if you did uh, read Coma Girl, I would recommend that you go out and listen to it every day too. Just go um, check out the Lottery Girl episode for the day and you can just click over and listen to the uh, Coma Girl audio um, uh, episode for the day too. Oh, thanks. Super funny, awesome groups. I agree. The the uh, Facebook groups. Uh, that's a funny group of of, of readers. I definitely join. So much fun in the group. Love their commentary. I know. Listen, the women who do the um, the uh, uh, wrap ups and the the recaps of the episodes. They really keep me on my toes because they're funnier than I am. Can I please write faster? Yes, mom. I will write faster. I have no social life. My condo is a disaster. Yes, uh, that's all I'm going to do from now on is just write, write, write. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I'm just reading more comments before I get to the next. Um... Oh, hi, Becky. It's my cousin from Dallas. This is uh, sending you love from Moorhead, Kentucky. Um, that's where I went to school. Uh, so more hometown people. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, so, see, so Janie uh, post, posted a question. Will we see any characters we've already met in your other books and serials? Um, in the Lottery Girl serial, no characters from the other serials except it's set in Atlanta. So guess what? We're going to see Body Movers characters doing cameos and uh, you know I so far I expect that uh, we'll see Carlotta and Jack and maybe Coop probably Hannah in Lottery Girl as well they'll just uh, make appearances here and there and um, and at least one of the characters will have something to do with the plot so so yeah I like doing those crossover character stories um, let's see, will I ever consider writing a continuation on the serials? I'd love to revisit and see where the characters are and how their lives are now. Um, oh, thanks for that. Uh, I, um, for those of you in the uh, Facebook groups, you saw that I did a uh, bonus scene of um, Body Movers 11 um, that uh, featured one of the characters from the previous serials. And that was a little bit too, 
I don't know, not to really wrap up her story, but to give you a little epilogue on what had happened with the coma girl and what's happening to her now. Um, I gotta be honest with you, I was really hoping that we could see continuations of the serials on television. Um, so I'm still hopeful that some of the serials will be turned into um, series or movies or something in between. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, I am leaving a little, little wiggle room, hoping that um, those stories might find uh, a life, life on another format. Um, but never say never. Um, I love these characters. I fall in love with them when I write them. So um, yeah, I may go back to the serials at some point for sure. Uh, and that was from Jennifer, by the way, a question from Jennifer. Uh, let's see. Um, so Mary LaRoche just posted Jack. Yeah, we're team Jack. Uh, let's see. Um, Betty says she buys the monthly novellas because she can't wait. That's funny. Um, Let's see, what time does the Daily Serial go offline? I'm three hours behind you, so thanks for that question. Um, I typically um, I, I typically post them to go 4 a.m. Eastern to 4 a.m. Eastern, so they're on for 24 hours um, Eastern time. So, But they'll still be 24 hours wherever your time zone is. It's just that you'll get them. They won't post until 7 your time, so they'll be live from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m., basically, your time. Ellen, thanks for that. Thanks for asking, and so I could clarify that. Hi, Pam. Need a movie of one of your books. Um, well, while we're talking about it, um, actually, the Hallmark Channel version of Stop the Wedding is uh, doing an encore this Sunday um, that's based on uh, my book of the same name, Stop the Wedding, and it uh, the movie is going to be on the Hallmark Channel Sunday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., and that's 10 a.m. to noon uh, Central for those of you who'd like to watch. I haven't seen Stop the Wedding, or if you'd like to see it again, um, as Sunday, uh, so tune in. Um, let's see. I had a couple more questions that were um, sent in before the live event. Kalinda asked, when will the Factory Girl serial be available in audiobook? Um, so Factory Girl was last year's serial um, that is uh, ended, but it's available in ebooks and uh, print. And actually, the audiobook is finished, and the narrator, Amy Gordon, just did a fantastic job. It's so good. Um, but it hasn't moved through quality assurance yet with ACX, which is the company that I use to make my audiobooks. So um, I'm hearing that they're backed up. It's going to take a few weeks, longer than usual. Um, fingers crossed that it might be available by the end of July, but it's looking like August probably for the Factory Girl audiobook. But trust me, it's worth the wait. The narrator is fantastic. Her performance is so good. Um, so yeah, I'm eager for it to come out too. But uh, thanks for that question, Kalinda. Um, let's see. Any more questions? From, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll through and see if any of you all have some more questions. Um, let's see. You just can't write fast enough. <laughs> Funny. Keep Body Movers going. Well, there's at least one more book. Uh, so book 12 is, yeah, at least one more. Um, don't rush through your books. I reread Coma Girl yesterday. To get ready for Lottery Girl. Thank you for that. Um, I read the last four serials in the last few months. Thank you. Gosh, that's 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 fantastic. That's the best compliment you can pay to an author, by the way. Um, should try audio. Never done audio before. So for those of you who are um, looking forward or looking um, or thinking about trying out audio, yeah, go to my Coma Girl audio serial page, and just click there. You'll see a little, um, it looks like a little box with an arrow in it, and you just click on the, ar the arrow, and it just plays, the audio will play, and you'll be able to hear it. Um, use uh, earbuds if you're on a, you know, if, you, if you're on a train or something like that, but yeah, the audio is great, and the narrator, for, again, for Coma Girl is fantastic. 
So, uh, so if that's the uh, first time to try audio, that's a good way to ease into it and see if you like it. Tell, okay, I'm not sure. Okay, so another more, another question. Oh, tell your, fr oh, tell your friends, yes. So I'm getting some help here from uh, my uh, social media guru. Um, Scott, who's going to say, hello, hello, Scott. Hello. Yeah, he's so great. He keeps me on track um, and a good friend, too. So, um, yeah, so tell all your friends to join us for Lottery Girl tomorrow. So please try to tell, I don't know, think of five or ten friends um, who uh, maybe they're not big readers. Maybe they're not, maybe they're people you want to um, read more, um, but they're not the person who maybe is going to tackle a full book. Um, but this is the serials are a good way to kind of ease people into stories. Um, gives them a little chunk every day they can read on their phone. Um, they don't have to lug a book around if that's, you know, uh, um, just some people get away from reading and um, just need a good reason to get back into it. So, yeah, invite as many people as you can to um, join us for Lottery Girl tomorrow. Um, hi, Chandra. Susan's here from Kentucky, too. It must be northern Kentucky. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, I'm from Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, so i lot got a lot of hometown folks on here. Um, oh, thanks for the support, Alexandra. That's so nice. Oh, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Um, so someone said they love the bonus scene that we posted in the Facebook groups. Um, so, again, that was a bonus scene. Um, after Body Movers 11, um, spoilers, you need to uh, read Body Movers 11 and Coma Girl before you see that bonus scene, but um, it's still there, so if you join the groups, you get the bonus scene, um, and that's, I'm going to be doing more of that going forward, so please do join the groups so you get every little um, um, bit of that, but really, the best thing about being in the groups are the other group members, and you're just going to love it. Um, let's see... Lisa's asking, she says, Coma Girl is my first of your books. I've um, been hooked ever since. Thank you, Lisa. Um, what should I dig into? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about body movers. Um, so, yeah, if you're, you know, it's a little bit of a commitment. Um, body movers is the prequel, is party crashers. Then there's body movers one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, there's six and a half. Body Parts is the novella that was kind of the break between the bridge between book six and seven. And uh, by the way, Six and a Half Body Parts is available for free on at all the retailers. So at Amazon, at Barnes and Noble, at Kobo, and iTunes, and Google Play, you can still download the Six and a Half Body Parts novella for free. Uh, it's something I made free um, when all of this uh, shutdown started. And I was trying to uh, get more uh, reading material out there for you. So please, if you haven't read Six and a Half Body Parts, or even if you think you might read the series in the future, go ahead and download Six and a Half Body Parts novella while it's free. So yeah, and then after Six and a Half Body Parts, it's book seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then book twelve is coming out next year. So Lisa, that's a lot of reading. Um, the best thing, I think, if you're thinking about getting into the Body Movers series is maybe jump into the Body Movers Facebook group and ask um, some of the members there if, um, if, you know, if you should read the series and what they think about it. Okay, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Oh, yeah, uh, Joanne says, please remind people, no spoilers if you read the month's novella. Uh, and if you post in the Facebook group. So yeah, that's probably one of the only ways that, you're, that your comments will be declined or maybe removed is if you've got spoilers in there. So a reminder that if you've read, uh, like let's just say all of July's entries and you know what happens on the last day of July, remember that the people who are getting the, reading it every day, they won't know until that last day of July. So we just ask that if you do like to read ahead and you get the novellas, 
just don't put those spoilers in the Facebook group. It's fine if you walk, if you jump in and say, oh, you're going to love, or you can't believe, like, you won't be believe what happens on the 27th or whatever. That's fine. We like all of that, uh, but just no spoilers. Uh, do I write the serial all at once, Mary asked. Um, no, I don't. Uh, I plan the serial all at once, and I kind of know what's going to happen at the end of the month for, you know, for each of the novellas, because they all have to end on a bit of a hook. So I kind of have to know where it's going, um, and so I know how each one begins and the month ends, and I kind of know what's going to happen in between. I mean, certain things have to happen at certain times. So I've got a pretty good idea, but I don't write it uh, until I'm going along. So basically I write, like I, I'm just finishing up the July, no, uh, the July episodes now. And then in July, I will write the August episodes. And going forward, it'll be month by month. So again, I really do look at the feedback that um, I'm seeing in the Facebook groups and the comments on the, my Facebook page in general to see what um, you're saying about the serial. It's, um, I don't know, this is sort of a throwback to, to Dickens when he used to write stories, uh, Charles Dickens in the uh, 1900, early 1900s, and his stories came out in newspapers every day and uh, just a, a little chunk at a time. And um, he would listen to what readers, how readers responded and what things that they wanted and didn't want to happen, and he, you know, would, uh, you know, keep that in mind as he finished the story, and that's what I do too. Um, so yeah, those of you who get the novellas, you know that one thing I put in the back is, if you find a typo, let me know, because I am writing this story so darn fast that um, sometimes I'm just moving through it so quickly that you get it pretty much from my keyboard straight to your e-reader. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I am, this is, this is, uh, as raw as it gets. And it's, uh, you, you, you basically are seeing how my mind works. Um, so thanks for that question, Mary. I'm scrolling. Uh, yay. I love Stop the Wedding. Thanks for that comment, Mackenzie. Um, yeah, they did such a good job. I have to say Hallmark did a great job with that movie and the, um, actor and actress, played the main uh, roles, just have so much chemistry. Uh, Rachel Boston and Neil Ma Matter, he is just, uh, he's, he's sexy and great, and she's beautiful and great, and they're great together, and yeah, oh, they're so good. So stop the wedding on Sunday if you guys get a chance to tune in. Watched it many times. Thanks, Marie. Um, Kelly says, all the serials are great. Thank you. Hi, Betty. Um, I love the characters in Factory Girl. Any chance there'll be another book to follow? Never say never. There was a, you know, Factory Girl left off with a lot of story left to tell there. Um, you know, my, my business manager in Hollywood seems to like the story, and maybe there's going to be, you know, if there's interest in it, I would really love to see that one on the small screen, but, um, ugh. You know, that's always such a crapshoot. But yeah, if it doesn't happen, at some point I will probably do a bonus scene for Factory Girl sometime down the road, and we'll put that in one of the groups too. So Jill says, did I mention the Voodoo series? I did not, but um, um, I actually am working on books three and four. I really thought I would get them out this spring, um, this in the last couple of months, but things just conspired. Um, and I just didn't have time to um, get them just the way I wanted them. Uh, but I am I am still working on those two books, and I'm hoping to have them out this fall, maybe around Halloween. I thought maybe that would be a good time to release them, so that's what I'm shooting for. So I will be working on the last two Voodoo books in between the Lottery Girl serial. So who was it that said something you just need to be writing all the time and doing nothing else? That's kind of what I do. You should ask my neighbors who knock on my door or send me a text and say, you have 12 packages stacked up in front of your door. Are you dead in there? What about your detective series? Okay, Marie asked. 
So this, she's asking about the Two Guys Detective Agency book, which was a book I wrote back in around 2012-ish. Um, and I actually wrote that book because we had it option for a TV series. My manager literally told me, we can option this if you put a book behind it. And that's why I wrote it. And then, you know, in the meantime, I fell in love with this, with the characters. And I've been trying like crazy to get back to them. But I just had so many other projects on my desk, I just couldn't. But yes, I'm one of the reasons why I was looking for a way to end the Body Mover series with book 12 next year um, was so I could get back to Two Guys Detective Agency. And one of the reasons why I wanted to finish up the Voodoo series with books three and four and get those off my desk is so I could get back to Two Guys Detective Agency because I do have big plans for that series. So thanks for hanging in there. I know it's been a long time since book one was released, but I'm going to get back to it. Um, yeah, folks, I'm going to live to be 100, and um, all I do is write, so more books are coming. You keep reading, I'll keep writing. Um, oh, uh, Dominique said the sample of the audio Como Girl was great. Um, thanks for that. Actually, that's I'm glad you brought that up, Dominique, because sampling, you know, you, you all can go on um, Amazon or Audible or iTunes, wherever you get your audio books. And you can download a sample of the audiobooks just like you can an ebook, and um, that that gives you an idea of whether you're going to like the story, uh, if you like the sound of the narrator, just the you know all of that. Uh, so definitely sample. You can sample audiobooks before you commit to um, buying them. That's a that's a good way to go. Um, Mackenzie says hi, Scott. Okay, let's see. All right, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Um, let's see. Thanks, love the bonus scene. Thank you. Um, let's see. What authors do you love to read and what genres do you like? Okay, Susan asked this question. Um, oh, gosh, Susan, I have so many authors I love to read. It's going to be difficult. I'm going to leave a bunch out. And so many of them are friends. So I, I read... Uh, Rita Heron, Wendy Wax, um, I read um, oh, so many authors, I'm not even able to, to say them all. Um, I like lines, too. I still read a lot of Harlequin books. Um, I, um, I like Jan Ivanovich. Um, oh, gosh. So, you know what? In my newsletter, that I, um, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to uh, change the format of the newsletter so I could talk more about books that I've read. And so uh, please sign up for my newsletter. I'm going to be mentioning, um, talking a lot more about books I'm reading because I still, I have lots of books on my Kindle, but I have lots of print books too. And I have a stack on my nightstand. I have a couple in my workout bag. I have um, books all around my condo, pretty much in every room, so I've got a book to read everywhere I go. But I also read a lot of nonfiction, so I love history, and I love um, business books and just sort of general uh, how-to. Um, so, yeah, so in every genre, um, I read, um, I, like, I like romance, I like thrillers, I like science fiction, um, I've read a lot of young adult. Um, let's see, not a lot of horror, although there are a couple of books in the genre that, you know, if people will say, try this, you'll like it, I, I definitely will try just about anything. So, yeah, always happy to hear recommendations, by the way, on Facebook. Just post books that you're, other books that you're reading that other people might enjoy. And, um, yeah, and I, anything you think I'd like to read, definitely put it on there. Um, in between writing, I do, that's, writing damages your reading. I don't get to, to read as much as I would like, but, um, but I still, I still love it. Um, ha, huh, Mary, Mary's the one who says, you need to write faster. She's the one who just posted, she doesn't have time to read. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, more comments. We have to survive 2020 to get a new Body Movers book. That's hysterical. That's that's great. Yeah, I'm um, so far I've been healthy, 
you know, knock on wood, I hope to stay healthy. Uh, okay. Let's see. Any more questions? Thanks, guys. Thanks for all these great comments. You are so wonderful. I have the best readers in the world. Um, so, Mackenzie, you said you found book two at a thrift shop. That must be in the Body Mover series, and um, you wouldn't have discovered books if you hadn't picked up that book. Yes, um, used bookstores uh, and libraries, uh, authors love them because they give new life to, uh, they reach readers that we can't, and they help us keep our backlist um, out there. So, yeah, I'd love to hear that. Love, Jennifer says, love the voodoo books. We'll have to reread the first two. I had to reread the first two to write, um, to, uh, to work on books three and four, which is why I have to get them done quickly because I can't get too far removed from the notes that I took from books one and two. Oh, uh, let's see. Thanks, guys. Uh, wonderful comments. Everybody, just uh, too many people to thank. Um, you guys are the best readers. Oh. Um, let's see. Okay, Melissa says, what places geographically ins have inspired the settings in your books? Um, so I've lived a few different places. So I grew up in eastern Kentucky, and I lived in central Kentucky and worked there. Then I moved to Atlanta, um, and I've lived a few different places in Atlanta, which it sounds like it's the same city, but trust me, um, depending on where you live in Atlanta, it's a very different experience. Um, and I'm in Midtown now, and I love it here. Um, and this is the area that I lived in and had in mind when I wrote Body Movers. So a lot of the Body Mover series takes place around Midtown and Lindbergh and Buckhead and that area. So obviously, I, I borrow a lot from Atlanta for that series. Um, and uh, for Factory Girl, I set it in Tennessee, but as a lot of people on here from my hometown in eastern Kentucky will know, I actually based a lot of that setting and, that, and the things that happened in that book um, on things that happened in my uh, hometown, there was, which was a uh, factory town once upon a time. And Unfortunately, no longer is, but um, so I borrowed from Eastern Kentucky, even though I said it in Tennessee. Um, for the cereals, uh, for Comeback Girl, that was in Alabama, and I'm pretty strategic about where I set the cereals because I really like to have um, some characters from other books walking through. So for Coma Girl, that was in Atlanta, and we saw a lot of Jack Terry from Body Movers in that story. Uh, Comeback Girl, the same reason I said it in Alabama. Um, that's where Jack's from originally, so he went back there to uh, be involved in a little bit in that story. Uh, Temp Girl was also, that was my second serial, that was set in Atlanta. And again, we saw the Body Movers characters move through that story. Uh, Factory Girl, I set it in Tennessee, but close enough to Atlanta that Carlotta could get there and have her cameo. And um, same thing with Lottery Girl. It's going to be set in Atlanta. So I'm definitely, I definitely borrow and draw on the um, places that I've lived um, to, um, to add a little bit to those stories. So let's see. So Carla says six hours to go uh, before um, Lottery Girl. So thanks for that. Yeah, it's um, okay. And so a Alexandra made a comment, and it kind of goes in with a, a question that I had, so I'm going to do them both at the same time. So Alexandra says, "Wife is a four-letter word." This was such a fun read. So thanks for that, and that kind of dovetails in a question that um, Gina asked, and she said, "How did you write so many books at the beginning of this year?" And um, so the thing is, is I didn't uh, didn't write so many books, but I did release a lot. So. Let me see if I can get, if I can remember all of these. So um, since January, it was Manhunting in Mississippi, um, Taking Care of Business novella, Cover Me, romantic comedy, and let's see, It Takes a Rebel was a romantic comedy, and then Wife is a four-letter word. I think there was one more in there. Huh, okay, five or six. Anyway, all of those books were revamped, um, 
rom-coms that I wrote for a publisher, some of them 20 years ago. So what happened is they gave me the rights back, and um, this is kind of a dream for an author. You know, we, we, when we have a long career, we think about those early books and wish that we had a chance sometimes to go back and tweak them and update them and change a few things. And frankly, 20 years down the road, my writing hopefully is better than it was back then. So, uh, so yeah, when those books got reverted to me and um, I finally could go in and update them, that's what I did. So all of those books that I released in, since January were um, sort of updated, revised versions of previous books that I had done. So I didn't write them from scratch, but I did go in and, and do lots of surgery on them. Um, so thanks for that comment about wife is a four-letter word. That was one of my favorites, too. The funny thing is, I go back and read these old books. Um, they read like someone else wrote them because, you know, you would think, ah, oh, I'll never forget this book. I spent so much time writing it. How could I ever forget these characters or this storyline? But I do because I have to clean out my head, clear things out for uh, the next story. I really don't remember characters in most situations that I wrote, certainly no details from books that I wrote 20 years ago. So when I read those, they read like someone else had written them. So I got to enjoy them. Um, and then I got to go in and, and clean them up a little bit. So, okay. And yeah, thanks. Uh, Mackenzie says, I'm glad you were able to get your books back. Um, uh, the, uh, yeah, me too. Uh, my former publishers have been uh, you know, pretty good about that. Uh, I've gotten back a few that I could update and re-release, and um, other publishers uh, still hanging on to some things, but um, careers are long, and I hope to get those, those back again someday, too. Um, uh, Marie says, the novella from the town hit by the tornado. Uh, let's see. Are you asking... Um, Oh, right. That was the other one that went out. Yes, Marie. See, Marie knows my schedule more than I do, so I put out the novella uh, from the Southern Road series. That one was reverted to me, and I updated it just a tiny bit and re-released it. Um, yes, from the uh, Southern Road series. Um, yes. Thanks, Marie. I'm glad you're keeping up with it more than I am. Uh, let's see. And Mackenzie asked, have you ever written two books at the same time? Yes, I have. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Um, and actually, I'm, I've usually got two or three on deck that I'm working on. And I'm um, making notes on one, updating another, finishing another. Um, yeah, I've always got two or three books in different stages of completion. And Julia says, will there be any more books in Two Guys Detective Agency? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to get back to that series. I really love those characters. I loved writing Sisters. And um, a lot of actually has changed since that first book came out. So what I'll probably do is go back and tweak the first book just a little bit to um, update it, maybe put some more technology and some other uh, updates in it. And, um, and then I'll get that sequel written, I promise. Uh, Dominique said, love Southern Roads in audio. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, uh, the, the same, the narrator who uh, narrates my Body Movers books is Maureen Jones, and she narrated Southern Roads uh, series as well. And oh, she did such a good job. I just loved how she narrated that series. So thank you. And uh, Becky says, you should have Mallory appear on TLC's The Lottery Changed My Life. Um, uh, no one said the change had to be good. Um, that's actually a good suggestion. Um, I've got some things. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of research on lottery winners in preparation for writing this serial. So, uh, yeah, it uh, doesn't always turn out the way everyone thinks it is, but, but it sure is awesome to think about, isn't it? Just, uh, you could do a lot of good if you won the lottery. So let's hope that's what happens. Um, okay, let's see. There was, let um, see if I had one or two more questions on here that were submitted before. Um, Anna Marie says, what's going on with the Coma Girl TV series? Oh, thanks for asking. And um, 
Still trying to find a network home for the pilot script for A Coma Girl. Um, it's, the script is fantastic, and it was written by a really talented writer named Liz Bassey. Um, and she came up with just the best idea for how Coma Girl could really come alive. It's, gonna, it's, it's a great role. It's a plum role for any young actress out there who's looking to, um, uh, to, for a show, uh, for a uh, signature role in a show. She figured out a way to make Coma Girl active and not be just in the bed the whole time. Um, and it's just ingenious, and I hope that the script gets picked up by a network. We're still hoping. Um, the script actually was one of 20 projects that was honored by the We For She group last year. And We For She is a Hollywood group that um, they spotlight scripts and projects that are written by women, about women, um, that uh, haven't been produced yet. So they're looking for sort of those those hidden gems that um, maybe have, um, haven't been um, produced yet and uh, that are still looking for a home. And so we're hoping that that coverage will get us uh, another audience. But uh, meanwhile, uh, Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, call me. Love to be on any of those. Um, so yeah, we still have high hopes for a Coma Girl TV series. And I'm looking for questions. Questions? Let's see. Oh, uh, Mackenzie says, there's a TV series? Well, uh, there, uh, TV, the Coma Girl book was optioned for a TV series, and a script was written. It actually, uh, the show sold to a network, but then that network renewed, like, every show from its previous season and didn't really have a lot of room for new shows. So they didn't, they decided to not film the, the pilot, even though the script was already written. So now, the good thing is, we, now we have a finished pilot script that's wonderful. Um, but the bad news is we haven't found a network to um, pick it up yet. And of course, Hollywood's been shut down through all of coronavirus, just like everybody else. So that's kind of put the, the um, brakes on things. Um, but still, I'm hopeful, and if any of you all know, have any contacts at um, any of the streamers, yeah, we would appreciate just a, a phone call. Um, that would be um, that would be great. And this helps, guys. When when um, producers see how um, rabid fans are for different series, that really helps. And trust me, when my business manager is pitching Coma Girl or any of these other series. He talks about how active all of you are, all are in Facebook and in the groups, and, uh, and it really helps. You just can't imagine. So thanks again for everything that you do. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, oh, uh, Rachel asked. This is a question sent in before the event. And she said, what TV shows are you watching? So... Um, Okay, so after taking the Shonda Rhimes masterclass on writing for TV, um, which is wonderful, I highly recommend it if anyone's interested in, um, in seeing what goes on uh, behind pitching and writing a TV show, uh, she is just amazing. So anyway, in, in the masterclass, she talked, of course, about um, preparing for and writing and how she changed the pilot for Grey's Anatomy and set it up so that it could have all these um, storylines going off of the um, pilot episode and the characters that she developed there. And it was just so fascinating to me that it was, uh, Grey's Anatomy was one of those shows that I had just never really gotten into. Uh, I knew about it, but it was just um, something that for some reason I didn't, didn't watch and it, it got to the point where I was like, well, no, I'll never catch up now. So I, I had just kind of fallen off my radar. But after that, I went back and, of course, binged all 15 seasons of Grey's Anatomy on Netflix, which, you know, this was broadcast show, folks. So that is, what, 25 shows a, ser a season? So a lot of uh, TV watching. Took me a long time to get that in. Um, and, by the way, I haven't um, watched season 16 yet, so 
No spoilers, no one tell me who Meredith is sleeping with now. Um, but I'll get back to it after I finish my next deadline. Um, uh, some other shows, let's see. I'm just now getting into Killing Eve on BBC. I'm, I know I'm, I'm kind of late to that party too, but I'm really enjoying that. And um, The Great on Hulu, which is a series about Catherine the Great. It's very sort of tongue-in-cheek and um, a little risque, and um, um, but uh, kind of dark humor, but I really like that. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I um, tried Upload on Amazon Prime, which is really clever. It sounds like a, it's, it's a little sci-fi, but it's a sci-fi rom-com. Um, it sounds a little odd, but it's, it's really a clever premise, and I thought it was uh, well-written, and, and the actors are great, too. So check out Upload if you're uh, looking for something new. And, um, oh, and I'm trying to get caught up on Call the Midwife on PBS. Uh, which is sort of the other extreme. It's sweet and wonderful, and, you know, it's PBS. Oh, so good. If you haven't watched Call the Midwife, just, you know, prepare to binge that show. That's a really good one. Um, let's see. Janice says, call Stephanie, Netflix. Yes. Yes, Netflix, call me. Um, Joni says she'd like to see Factory Girls, a TV series. Thank you. Um Susan also binged Grey's Anatomy. Um, so Mackenzie says, can you write and watch at the same time? Just curious. Sometimes. Um, it depends. If it's, um, if it's not a thriller, if it's something I don't have to pay really close attention to, sometimes I can write and maybe I'll look up, you know, in between paragraphs or whatever. Um, or if I'm editing, I can watch more TV when I'm editing. I heard Yellowstone was great. I hope so, because about 25 episodes are sitting on my DVR right now waiting to be watched. So Outlander's a really good show. I caught the first season of Outlander, but I haven't gotten back to it. But yeah, Diana Gabaldon is amazing. She's another writer I really like to read. I uh, met her too. She's a really terrific person. She's a good girl. Um, let's see if I've got any more questions. I think that's... Yeah, I think that was all the questions that um, that were written in, but just kind of, let me see. I'm going to um, see if anybody else, is there a question? We're coming up on an hour, folks, so actually we're past an hour, so <laughs> we probably should be wrapping up here soon, but um, uh, if you've got any last questions, be sure and post them. And um, Deanna says, more to guys, please. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so, gosh, we should probably wrap it up, folks. I just can't thank you enough for joining us tonight and for um, bearing with me through the little technical details, but uh, technical difficulties in the beginning. But we're here. We're good. We pulled it off. Um, I just want to thank you again for, for, um, for being here and for being such great readers. Um, you guys, you're the reason I do this. You're the reason I keep doing it. You're the reason I love doing it. Um, I love all of you, and I hope you're safe, and I hope that um, you're well, and that uh, you come out of, uh, uh, all of us come out of this on the other side, um, just happier and healthier and uh, with more gratitude. I know, please know that I'm grateful for you, and um, I, um, I just so appreciate you so much. Um, so be well, be happy, happy reading, and um, that's all for now. Bye.